Hello everyone, it's your girl Claire and I remain your girl Claire and before I go into the word of God, before I go into the message that I have um, for us today, I just want to take our time to give God the glory, to thank God for his goodness, for his mercies, for all he has done and all that he has been doing in our lives and to say thank you lord for your grace and for your mercy thank you lord for preserving our lives thank you lord for protecting us even from the hands of the wicked from the hands of the adversary thank you lord for preserving our lives at all times we are just so grateful to you oh god and i just want to also thank everyone who who is here right now everyone who has been a part of what god is doing here on my channel i do not take you for granted so i just want to say a big thank you to you all and to say god bless you for sticking with me and if you are stopping by for the very first time to watch my video or any of my videos um you are welcome this channel is all about um motivating people with the word of god and encouraging them to be who god wants them to be because i believe that we were all born with a purpose and not until we discover our purpose and begin to manifest our purpose and begin to you know walk in line with our purpose then we will never live a fulfilled life here on earth so it's all about um encouraging people uh, through difficult times um, to stand firm in their faith in God and um, cling on to the word of God irrespective of what is happening in their lives. So that is what briefly what this channel is all about. Um, today I actually have a word for us all. Um, it's a portion of the bible my, my message is taken from the portion of the bible in ephesians chapter 6 which i know almost every one of us have heard about the scripture but i just want to throw in more light into it because for some time now this scripture has been repeatedly coming into my spirit and you know that this message came for a time like this so but before i go into the word i want us to pray heavenly father in the name of jesus christ our lord and savior who died on the cross to set us free from the shackles of sin the one who died on the cross to destroy the works of darkness the one who took away our infirmities the one who gave us the victory on calvary the same jesus who died and rose again for our justification we just thank you, O oh Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, O oh God, because we know your word is working for us and not against us. And we know that we overcome by the power in the name of Jesus. We are not moved by the circumstances of life, the things that we see or the things that are happening around us. Because we know you, O oh God, is alive and well and you are seated on the throne and fighting our battles no matter how of the battle seems to be no matter what the enemy brings our way because we are aware that we are in a battle and we know that we do not win this battle by might nor by power but by the spirit of the almighty god your word tells us oh god that is not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord that this mountain shall be removed so father we thank you because we know we overcome by the blood of jesus and by the words of our testimony we are not moved because we know that that adversary is a loser and that no matter the situation we come 
come out triumphant in the mighty name of Jesus, especially in this dark age, especially in, in these last days. We know that the battle is fierce, but we know that we are well able and prepared to stand whatever the enemy brings our way because we have a God who is stronger, who is more powerful, who is mighty, the God who is seated upon the throne and when he speaks that word trembles, we thank you because we know we have a God who is reigning supreme and who is ruling in dominion and in power and in all might in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father Lord, because we know that all things work together for our good because we love the Lord and we are called and chosen according to his divine purpose. So, Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory because we know you always hear us when we pray. We thank you because chains are broken and, 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 and we know, oh God, that every imagination and every thoughts of the adversary, every every plan of the enemy, every strategy and every scheme of the devil has been destroyed when Jesus said it is finished on the cross of Calvary. He meant it is over. In other words, we are not moved in any way because we know God has given us the victory ahead of time and we walk in divine victory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' most powerful name. Amen. So I am going to be sharing um, a few words from the scriptures from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. My message for today says, put on the whole armor of God. So I want us to quickly go into scriptures. We are going to look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I will take it from verse 10. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. He says, Finally, in a conclusive manner, in the end, at the final moment, lastly, be strong in the Lord in a conclusive manner, meaning this is just what you have to do. Be strong. It says to us what? Be strong. In who? In the Lord. He says, and in the power of his, his, who? God's might. His might. Amen. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Then it goes down to say, because God knows that you cannot fight the battle alone. And trust me, if you are going for a battle, you just don't stroll into the field. Amen. You have to get prepared to go into a field when you are going for a battle. We all see soldiers, you know, when they want to go for a fight or a combat, they dress up with all their armor, you know, for them to be well preserved, for them to be safe, you know, when they go into that battlefield. So he says to us to do what? To be strong first in the Lord. In other words, stay strong. Be strong always be strong in the Lord, no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, no matter the trials, no matter the challenges, no matter what the enemy brings your way to try to put you off balance, to try to, you know, cause you not to focus on what lies ahead of you. He says, put on, when you go to 11, he says, put on what? The whole armor of God. It is not by might nor by power that you triumph above the circumstances and the challenges of life. This is one thing you should have at the back of your mind. Mind That is not by your might or not by your power that you triumph over the circumstances and the situations of life. Then it says, put on what? The whole armor of God. Put on. In other words, dress up yourself with the armor of who? God, not your own armor, not any fleshly uh, um, or 
any physical armor you know it says dress yourself up with that armor of god the one that is of god because if you want to do it your own way it's not going to work if you're going to do it your own way with the physical uh, uh, weapons it won't work because the same Bible makes us to understand that the weapons of our warfare are what they are not carnal. Before I continue, I want you to understand first that as a Christian, as a child of God, the very moment you come into Christ, you have signed up for a battle with the adversary. Hallelujah. The very moment you signed up. Uh, 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 you came into Christ the very moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior you signed up for a battle a spiritual battle so I want you that it is a fierce battle because there has always been an opposition between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness these two do not agree and that is because they do not belong together amen so that is why the moment you um, accept jesus christ as your lord and personal savior the cohorts of hell will come for you the kingdom of darkness will not take it lightly with you because you have come into the light because you have left the kingdom and the domain of darkness and have stepped into the kingdom of light which is the kingdom of god so god is preparing our minds to know that this battle is not a physical one it is not a battle that you just see with your eyes hallelujah it is a battle that is spiritual and for you to win the battle for you to overcome for you to stand you know for you to overcome you must be prepared spiritually you must dress up yourself spiritually you must put on the armor of god you must wear the the the, the armor of god for you to be able to stand when the trials and the challenges of life comes your way so the scripture says Put on what? The whole armor of God. The whole armor. That means the entire, the full armor, the complete armor of God. All of it. He says, dress yourself up. Cover up yourself with the armor of God. Consistently wear the armor of God. So that you can be able to do what? Stand against what? The wiles of the prince of this dark age. The devil, our adversary. Amen. He says so that you can be able to do what? To stand against the schemes, the maneuvers, and the tricks, and the devices, and the moves, and the plans, and the strategies of the adversary. Because he is very cunning. Amen. We remember what happened in the Garden of Eden. He was able to trick Adam into Eat, uh, Adam and Eve into eating the apple that God wanted them not to eat or devour. So he cunningly came with his strategy and his scheme to cause man to fall short of the glory of God. And that is why today we see so many evil things happening around the world. We see because man fell short of the glory of God and picked up the nature of the adversary, the devil, the very moment he disobeyed the God who made the heavens and the earth. The very moment the a man disobeyed God, the words of God that says to him, do not eat of that tree. That very moment, man fell short of the glory of God. And from that moment, man picked up the nature of the devil. Because before then, man had the nature of God. Because the Bible says, man was created in the image of God. And from that moment, we saw how Cain killed his own brother <laughs> out of envy and jealousy from that moment we began to see the different atrocities that were manifesting themselves or itself upon the surface of the earth amen so he says to what to do what in verse 11 he says put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to do what stand against the tricks and the strategies the wiles hallelujah the plans and the moves the maneuvers the tricks of the devil because the devil is trickish he is very trickish and very cunning 
The Bible tells us that he roams about what seeking whom to devour, to devour, hallelujah. He has no purpose. His only purpose is to move up and down and cause confusion and sow the seed of discord and the, and the seed of hatred and the seed of envy and jealousy, the seed of destruction in the hearts of men. The things we see today, the, the devil is a human, hallelujah. Just as you see God in a human, that is how the devil uses, you know, God uses a man for his purpose here on earth. Likewise, the devil uses a man for his purpose here on earth. That's true. Just the same way when God wants to bless you, God uses a man, God sends a man. When the devil wants to destroy you, he does what? He also sends a man to destroy hallelujah anytime god comes up with a good plan what happens the devil will look for uh, 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 an opposite plan a negative plan to try to stop the work of god but thank god because god is god and he is not a man and god has the powers to be able to destroy the works of satan and that jesus already did on calvary when he said it is finished because he went down there and he took the keys and the authority from the devil that is why no matter what you're faced with, child of God, son of God, daughter of God, don't be moved because you know that God is working all things out for your good. There will always be a spiritual battle. There will always be challenges. There will always be uh, um, an opposition from the kingdom of darkness. As long as you are serving God in spirit and in truth, that devil won't let you be. So be prepared for challenges in life. And when they come, know that they come to make you stronger. There is something just at the corner and the devil knows it. So anytime God is, is about to do something amazing, the devil comes up with a trick, with a strategy. If you read um, in the book of Matthew chapter 2, if you read from verse 1 down, we know of how um, the wise men from the east, they came to Jerusalem, you know, because they saw the star and they wanted to worship Jesus. As in they heard that the king um, of kings and the king of the Jews has been born. So they came to inquire, you know, they came to visit and to present him with gifts. Now, when they came to um, Jerusalem, what happened? They met with the Pharaoh. Uh, sorry, I keep saying Pharaoh. Why? They met, met with Herod um, because Herod was the king then. And now we know that Herod didn't want Jesus, you know, because he was king. He didn't want another king to replace him. He didn't want another king, you know, to take his place. So out of envy and out of jealousy, you know, he said, like I said, anytime God has a plan, the devil will always, you know, try to counteract it. The devil will always try to oppose the plan of God, but he is God and he never loses a battle. So what did he do? He marked out a strategy, a scheme, plan to kill Jesus. But God is wiser and God knows the heart of man. And God knows even our, our end from our very beginning. So Jesus was born for a purpose. And that purpose must be established because God had a hand in it. Because it was a divine plan. It was the divine will and the divine purpose of God that Jesus should come and do what? And redeem man and reconcile man back to god so what happened he said to the wise men go when you find out where he is come back bring back words to me 
so that I might equally go and do what? Worship him. But we all know that he did not mean that. He was plotting and that is how the devil works. So he wanted them to go, bring back words, give him information. It's happening in our lives today. Be careful the people around you because the devil uses those around you sometimes to get information about you to try to destroy you. So be very sensitive in your spirit when it comes to the people around you and the people who hang out with you. But I pray that the counsel of Ahitophel will never stand in our lives. So what happened? God is smarter, always smarter than the devil because he made him. He made him. So God appeared to this man when they had seen Jesus. After visiting him and presenting him with the gifts, God said to the wise men, he warned them, said, don't go back to that man. Don't take words. Don't even let him know where he is because God knew the plans of the devil. So I pray in the name of Jesus that every plan of the enemy against us will be exposed by the power in the name of Jesus and every scheme and strategy of the adversary to try to, you know, find out things about our lives or monitor our lives and try to hold on to that to destroy us. It will never prevail as long as God is still on the throne and God is reigning on high. Hallelujah. So at the end of the day, this wise man didn't go back to Herod and he was angry. He was furious. You know, he was like, what? You know, and gave that wicked order that they should slay if you go to um verse 16 if you read from the 16 um down to 18 the bible says he sent an order he gave an order that all the male children who were in bethlehem and in all his districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men that they should all be slain, that they should be killed. They were all killed just because of Jesus. The devil will destroy the masses just for one soul. The devil will destroy so many just of because of one good person. Hallelujah. But thank God. For God. So the Bible makes us to understand in the book of Ephesians. Let me go back to uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6 where we're reading from. It's so it says put on the whole armor of God. In other words put on the complete armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. It says because we do not wrestle combat, fight, or battle, nor contend with what? With physical forces, which are what? Fleshly or fleshy or of flesh and blood. They are not flesh and blood. It says, but against principalities, my God. It says, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, this world. In other words, this world. It says, against what? spiritual hosts of wickedness in what the heavenly places which means the spiritual realms it says we battle against principalities and powers and against what the rulers of darkness is all about the dark it says it's all about spiritual hosts of wickedness and that is why we see so much wickedness in the world today that is why we see so much evil in the world today that is why we see so much atrocities being committed in the world today because the devil has dominated the hearts of men hallelujah so if you are a child of God, you need the full armor of God. You need to dress up yourself, you know, from day to day, consistently, all the time with these armors. Hallelujah. He says what? Take up the whole armor of God so that you can be able to do what? To withstand, so that you can be able to resist, stand up, to face it. 
to survive, to endure, and to do what? To be here in the evil world days. The days that we are in, they are evil. I don't know about you, but I smell so much evil all around the globe. I sense so much evil all around the world, all around us. I don't know about you, but there's so much evil hovering all around. But thank God for the greater light. That is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who shields us and protects us from spiritual wickedness. Hallelujah. So if you go down, I, 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 quickly, I quickly want us to see what those armors are. What are those armors? He talks about the truth. Let's go to 13. He says, Therefore do what? Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, the days that we are in. And having done all to do what? To stand, to resist, to survive. To endure, to be here, to face up with it when those days are there. And we are in those days, those times that the Bible talks about. The heart of man is more wicked and more evil. He says, stand therefore, having guarded your what? Your waist with truth. Number one, truth. Be a truthful person. Be someone who stands on the side of truth. Hallelujah. He says, having put on what? The breastplate of what? Righteousness. Let righteousness be your breastplate. Talking about how you should dress up yourself as a child of God. One, have truth in you. Have righteousness. Stand for righteousness. Stand for the truth. Have all those things as qualities in you. He says, and having shored your feet with what? The preparation of the gospel of peace. Be someone who propagates the gospel of peace and not someone who causes confusion because the devil is the author of confusion. So if you are standing on the side of the devil, you are someone who causes confusion, who causes uh, uh, trouble with your gospel or with your message or with your words or with whatever, in whatever way. You are someone who anywhere you go, you cause confusion there, then you are not on the side of light. It says, it goes down to say 16, above all, taking war, the shield of faith. With which you will be able to do what? He says it is the shield of faith that you need for you to be able to quench what? All the fairy darts, all the evil arrows of the wicked one. He says you need faith, especially in a time like this. He says you need the faith, the God's kind of faith, for you to be able to quench what? The fairy darts of the wicked one. And then it talks about the sword of the spirit. If you go down, it says, and and before that it says, and take the helmet of what? Salvation. The helmet, you need a helmet of salvation. In other words, be saved. Take with you uh, salvation. Anywhere you go, preach that gospel of salvation. Reach out with the words of salvation. Be saved yourself and reach out with the, the gospel of salvation. And then the final one, it says, And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You need the word of God that is the sword of the Spirit. It makes us to understand how powerful the word of God is because it calls the word of God a sword. Hallelujah. So these are the things you need for you to be able to fight this battle and to be able to stand when the challenges and the warfare, that spiritual warfare comes or you are faced with any spiritual warfare or you are faced with trials and temptations. These are the armors as a child of God that you need to be able to stand the test of time. Truth righteousness the gospel of peace the shield of faith the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the word of god hallelujah finally verse 18 says something it says praying always with all prayers and supplication 
in the spirit. In other words, the word of God encourages us to be spiritually alert. Pray always because prayer is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual exercise. It's not just blabbing and it's not just a repetition of words. And it's not just uh, uh, um, a time, you know, to ask God, to, to demand things from God, to ask God to do this and do that. He says it's a spiritual thing connect you connect your spirit connects with god through prayers hallelujah so it says being watchful to this end with all what perseverance and supplication for all the saints pray for yourself pray for your family pray for your home pray for um your ministry, your calling, your purpose, your destiny, your whatever God has placed in your hands to do. Keep praying. That is the only way that you can overcome. And that is the only way that you can prevail. Hallelujah. When David went to face Goliath, I want you to understand something before I finish up. I'm going to end up with that. When David went into that field he didn't just stroll into the field because he knew what he was going to face even though he was not qualified as in in that field of fighting a battle he, he he didn't even know how to go about it he only knew that god taught him how to deal with the little animals and you know and a bear and you know all that in the bush but he had never stood before a giant, before a Goliath. And he wasn't even experienced in the, in the area of war. He, he didn't even know how to use all those armors of war, the physical armors. But my brother, my sister, I tell you one thing. David understood the spiritual principle. And that is all you need. He didn't just throw into the battlefield to stand up to Goliath. You know, he didn't bother about the physical armors rather, but he was spiritually prepared to face what confronted God's people. He was not going to fight for himself. He was going to fight for the people of God. He went into that field knowing that there is God who is greater and bigger than the Goliath that stood before him. He knew that he couldn't face Goliath with a physical armor, with those physical armors. And that was why he didn't take those along with him. He just went knowing fully well that God is faithful and that God who made a covenant with Israel, God who made a covenant with them, was able to bring down the Goliath that stood before him. He understood faith. He understood spiritual things, spiritual principles. He stood there knowing that by faith, you can overcome. By faith, we can overcome all the fiery darts of the devil. And with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, we can defeat every goliath that stands before us just keep being you child of god i encourage you today keep being you keep holding on to the word of god but please prepare yourself spiritually especially in the era that we are in the times are dark i keep saying it so much wickedness in the hearts of men all around the globe things are happening but thank god for god with God, we will always win. I love you and see you in my next video. God bless you and stay triumphant. Come with me. Love you. Bye-bye.